Well, as you can see, the trail's leveled out on top here. We're on top of, well, <laughs> it's funny how different parts of the country call the same, same uh, uh, geological formations different things. In the southwest, it'd be called a mesa. In, uh, um, I believe Africa could be called a steppe. Here in central Oregon, I guess you'd call it top of a, a rim. We climbed the almost 900 feet of elevation, and as you can see, we're on top of the, the flats up here on, above the, the lake. That peak over there is Black Butte. I don't know if it'll... There it is, kind of. In and out. A little hazy today. So, yeah. First mile and a half was the... the uh, elevation gain. About 850, 900 feet. This, this is about a seven mile, six and a half, seven mile hike here in central Oregon. I got the day off, so I decided to come over early and uh, do a hike. This is a western juniper tree and they're notorious over here for having um, porcupines in them. And usually what you do is you look for out in this desert area, you look for a spring uh, green grass and then look for the nearest juniper. Uh, look for the nearest juniper to that green grass, and there will be porcupines in that juniper. They may be out in the middle of nowhere, but as a kid, that's what we would do when we we're antelope hunting down in southeast Oregon. Is in the heat of the day, we'd go out. And and uh, look for porcupines because my brother-in-law at the time would was a trapper, and he would we'd get porcupines, and uh, he'd sell the hides to the to the uh, Klamath Indians over in Chiloquin, Oregon, and. So we'd go out and, and find trees with porcupines in them and, and uh, do the deal, take them home, skin them, and uh, pull the fine hairs that come up over the quills. There's hairs, really fine hairs, and the Indians use those for their headdresses and stuff. And. Uh, so we'd salt the hides and sell the hides and quills all to the Indians. They'll use them for for all kinds of stuff and the and the uh, fine fine hairs. And then the rest of the porcupine, he would either eat them as all trappers usually do, they'll eat whatever they trap. Or he would um, save it for trapping that, that winter for coyotes and bobcats. So, yeah, I know you guys are probably thinking, holy cow, this freaking guy here has a story for everything. 
<laughs> well, my life's kind of been that way, so. One thing to another, a lot of knowledge in my head, a lot of things I've been able to do over my life. And certainly not quitting there, that's for sure. All right, we'll bring you back, find something interesting. Here's snakey snakey. Here's snakey snakey snakey. Snakey snakey. Hmm. Which way should I go? That way or that way? You know what? Dun dun dun. I, I think I'm stumped. This tree reminds me of an old movie. Can anybody guess? Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. This would be the perfect trail to take kids on Halloween night and scare them with, with these darn trees. They're all crooked and broken. And I'm sure they look like monsters at night. So, one of the things that I've noticed lately and I do a lot of hiking on, I mean, all kinds of trails from, I mean, you guys know, we just got back from Wyoming and Montana and Idaho. There, Yellowstone, the Tetons, and, and uh, Glacier National Park. Hike uh, Eastern Oregon, Northeastern Oregon, here in Central Oregon over in the Central Cascades, up in Washington, Eastern Washington, um, over on the coast. And <clears throat> one thing I've noticed, granted, um, there's trails like Blue Pool, Tamlich Falls, that gets, oh wow, look at that, uh, gets hundreds of hikers on it a day. And the gorge, you know, before the fires last year went through, would get thousands of people through there. But like this trail, um, as I understand it, it's a pretty popular trail. Today it's I've seen three hikers on it, which is good. That's the way I like it. But, uh, yeah, this is the Deschutes arm of Lake Billy Chinook here we're looking at. We crossed that, I crossed that bridge coming in. Anyways, I don't think that this is a, uh, just by chance that this happens and what I'm talking about is garbage on the trails and the closer you get to uh, the Willamette Valley in Portland and that mass of, of day hikers that go out on those trails, the more garbage you find. Yeah, and I'm not turning this into a rant. What I'm saying is, is this is the second trail in less than a week. It would be 14 miles, and I have found absolutely no garbage on it whatsoever. No purple slash blue doggy poo bags. And there's, there's dog prints up here. You know, we, I saw 
an owner's dog earlier coming down. So it's not as though the dogs aren't being aren't out on this trail. For whatever reason, the closer to the Willamette Valley and the Portland area and those day hikers, those city day hikers, and I'm I'm not bagging on them, but the closer you get to those trails that the city dwellers are using, the more garbage is all over them. Um, I usually, you know, I, I usually bring a Walmart bag or two and pick up garbage along the trail. I'm telling you that, that hike uh, last Sunday over south of Hepner, Oregon, of course, I mean, it's, it's not a what it, it it's a well-groomed trail, but it probably sees five to ten hikers a week. You know, um, right now there's more bow hunters up there than than anything. So, but yeah, absolutely no garbage. I mean, and I'm not complaining about it, but. It's such a stark contrast, you know. Um, Glacier National Park, when we're hiking up there, picking and finding garbage, you know. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it, it slips out of somebody's pack. That's understandable. And sometimes it slips out of their, their pockets because they put it in there and they reach for a knife or keys or whatever, or their phone. It comes out with the phone. Eh, that's understandable. But, uh, yeah. So, I'll let you get a look at that again. That's something else, isn't it? See that little car down there? He's about to go across the bridge. It's just an observation I've seen, you know, I've noticed. There he goes across the bridge. So you can see how high we are. Beautiful, beautiful country. So my point is on the garbage situation is that, like I'm not I, I wasn't wanting to turn that into a rant that's not what it was what I, the point is is we really need the, the hiking community really needs to find a way to uh, teach the day hikers you know they're coming out to this is all stacked rocks. That's interesting. I don't know what the hell why they did that, but that's that's pretty cool. Um, really need to get do a. Uh, oh, there's a feather. Uh, really need to promote. To the young, to the young kids growing up, to pick up their garbage, you know, be prepared. Preparedness can include bringing a Walmart bag to stuff in your pack, and you know, I can't tell you. And there's some more stack trucks up here. I can't tell you, and it surprises me how many um, day hikers out here. Don't even carry a, you know, a fanny pack, a fanny pack, or a hydration pack, so they don't have room to put a sack or, you know, stuff to pick up garbage. So what's happening, I, I suspect, is they're 
you know, bring in the granola bars and their bottled water and stuff. And that's, that's great, you know. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, this is all stacked too. But, uh, putting them in the pants pocket and once they eat them, you know, they put them back in and, and suddenly, interesting, suddenly they, uh, grab their phone out of their pocket or what have you and oops there goes the wrappers or in the, or the oh little lizard run lizard run <laughs> wow it's beautiful up here um, so yeah they uh, we're over the bridge now Or they put their water, a bottle of water down and, and uh, take a picture or something and they forget it. And by the time they remember it, it's, uh, you know, 100 yards back down the trail. But we need to uh, figure out a way to, to uh, get the word out to the younger generations out here coming out to enjoy these incredible views like this and and uh, oh I'm gonna trip and uh, trails to not only be prepared with a you know you don't need an expensive backpack this this Columbia Sportswear one here I've got, you know, I think it was about 80 bucks, 80 or 90 dollars. But I've got Walmart ones I, I got on clearance for 15. And it came with a hydration pack and there's plenty of room in there to throw your stuff. You know. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. So I'm walking along here. Just minding my own business and wham! Upside the head I got hit by a bumblebee. I think he was as stunned as I was. He goes Bzzz, and he's gone. I'm like what the? What the? I know in my head I sound like Kenny Kill. What the? What were you doing? Oh! Boy, it's a beautiful day today. Look at that green water. Boy, take a look at this view. That big houseboat down there. <laughs> 